Let's say you had a high pass filter and you wanted to hook a load up to it. Something that we might always be worried about is whether the load resistor could affect the performance of the filter. In other words, that the load resistor might change the corner frequency of the filter. That's something that motivates the use of buffers, and we'll get to that here in just a moment. Another potential application for using a buffer could be to design a more complicated filter. Let's say, for instance, that you wanted to make a bandpass filter. You wanted to get rid of all the low frequencies, you want to get rid of all the high frequencies, you only want a certain band of frequencies to pass through your filters. What might be a way to design such a bandpass filter? One way to design the filter might be to cascade a low pass filter with a high pass filter. First you get rid of the high frequencies, then you get rid of the low frequencies. I suppose you could do it in the reverse order as well. It wouldn't really matter whether the high pass or the low pass filter came first. What would matter though is that whatever filter you put second could hypothetically affect the filter that came first. We need something to insert between the filters to make them both work as they're designed. Let's take a look at an example. In this problem, I intend to make a bandpass filter by cascading a high pass filter and a low pass filter. This is a one pole high pass filter on the left, and this is a one pole low pass filter here on the right. The high pass filter gets rid of all the low frequencies, and the low pass filter gets rid of all the high frequencies. However, the circuit here is not really an example of two one pole filters. It's actually an example of a more complicated two pole filter. The low pass filter, or the presence of the resistor and the capacitor over here in the circuit, will definitely affect the performance of the high pass filter. Something that we can use in order to make this work is a buffer. A buffer represents a very high impedance output for the first stage and a very low impedance input for the second stage. Effectively, no current passes through this line into the buffer. The input impedance is very high ideally infinite. In other words, it doesn't use up any current from the first stage of the circuit. If it doesn't use any current, it won't affect the voltage. If it doesn't affect the voltage, it won't change the filter's characteristics. What a buffer basically does is it measures the voltage right here at the input side, and then it recreates the same voltage over here at the output side without connecting the two with a wire or using current from the first stage in order to drive the second stage. This is the equivalent circuit of a buffer. We just have a controlled source. The buffer measures the voltage at the input and it recreates the same voltage at the output. This is what we want to have here because it effectively isolates the circuit here on the left with the circuit over here on the right. This would be one way to make a bandpass filter. Here's how to build one. It's possible to use a single op amp or operational amplifier in order to implement a buffer. It's an example of an active filter. An op amp is nothing more than an amplifier with a very high gain. That is, it uses an amplifier. Let's go through the analysis here. Basically, an op amp has the following characteristics. The output voltage right here is some gain A times the difference at the two inputs, V plus minus V minus. This gives us our first equation. And later on, we'll assume that the A is a large number, but let's just say that the gain imparted by the amplifier is just A for the time being. Let's now call V plus our input, and let's call V minus our output. I know it's our output because it's connected to our output by a wire. This gives us our second equation. Let's now distribute the A and rearrange the equation in order to find the gain, or the output voltage divided by the input voltage. You can see that it's A divided by A plus one, and now we're just going to assume that A is a large number. If A is a large number, then the one in the denominator becomes insignificant, and the gain of this amplifier is just one. In other words, the output voltage equals the input voltage. But something very nice about op amps is that the input impedance is very large. These devices don't use very much current at all from whatever stage or whatever circuit is coming before them. All of the power driving the second stage comes from the power supply of the op amp rather than the circuit that came just before the op amp. That's what makes these amplifiers very useful as buffers. Effectively, we're just reproducing the input at the output without drawing any power from the input. Buffers thus have a very large input impedance and a very small output impedance. This is not the only way to make a buffer, but I think it's one of the simplest designs for a buffer. And if you have, for example, a low pass filter followed by a buffer, 
followed by a high pass filter, followed by another buffer, then you've effectively designed a band pass filter using nothing more than two one pole low pass and high pass filters. They would work as designed irrespective of your load.